I don't want a lot for Christmas. Ooh, baby. It's a bit low. It's just a bit off. <laughs> okay, I think we should rather cook. <laughs> I'm Phoebe and I'm Warren and we're here to rescue Christmas. So today we're going to be showing you how to make an awesome glazed ham and some super crispy potatoes with a green salad on the side but I think the potatoes is what I'm really keen about. Yeah me too. We're doing ham fat and duck fat potatoes. Awesome. It's Christmas time. It's about indulgence. Get it all in there. Calorie count doesn't matter. Um, so we should start cooking soon. Yeah let's get started. Oh gosh. This is one little thing that <laughs> We can make it match mine a bit better. That's better. Please. Okay, now we can start. There we go. Nice. Good. Beautiful. Okay, good. Stunning. Okay, so first things first, we're going to get into the ham. I'm no, no, no. First things first. Oh. Hold on, sorry. I'm just going to cut this off. I just yeah. love it. it no one will like, be able to understand the video. It sounds like Christmas. <laughs> okay, gosh. Well, Sweet um, serenity. No, you're the Grinch. Um, okay, so we're going to start off with the ham. I've got a whole leg of ham here, and I'm going to show you how to easily take off the skin and get a perfect, perfect sticky um, fat coating on it. Phoebes, you're going to start whipping up the glaze at the same time. Yeah, and this glaze is really, really good because it's just basically a pantry glaze. What we do is we go around the shank edge first and just cut through the skin because we're going to leave this bit of skin off and then we're going to rip off the rest of the skin and peel it back gradually. And then on the other side of your ham, you just want to kind of release the skin. So guide your knife around. And then when I hit the back side here, you're just going to connect up to the shank. And now begins the slow process of feeling Okay, while you're doing that, yep. because everyone can see what you're doing, I'm going to mix all these ingredients together. So we've got brown sugar, and then we've got maple syrup, some melted butter, so some extra fat to yeah. put on the fat. <laughs> But I find by putting some melted butter in um, a ham glaze, you kind of get that browning that happens when you brown butter in a pan. It also happens on the ham as well. Because with a ham glaze, we're really looking for that proper caramelization. There's nothing worse than when someone pulls out a Christmas ham and it just looks a bit pale and insipid. Yeah, yeah. We want really, really dark caramel. So basically the more sugar and fat, the better. Yeah, exactly. So then some Dijon mustard. And a lot of Dijon mustard. I think go go heavy on it. Some, you know, you don't want to do a couple of teaspoons. I think we've got a quarter cup here. Yeah. So you want to go heavy on the mustard for some big flavour for a Christmas ham. A little bit of sherry vinegar just to cut through all of that fat and sugar. And then we've got some mixed spice. Okay, and then you're really just looking to emulsify this together. And then your glaze is done. And at the same time, I have removed all that skin perfectly, see? So I find when scoring a ham, and we do this for shoots every year, it's best to kind of score it in one direction. Don't try and do the triangles, because what happens is when you get the triangles of the diamonds, the fat tends to move everywhere. Mm. Whereas when I score, I do it in one direction, but also along the rim of the fat, I kind of leave a one centimetre border. And that way, you've got all the lines, but the fat's always in one position, so you're not getting bits that are breaking off and sliding everywhere. So whenever you are slicing from one direction to the other, make sure you are leaving a bit of a gap. Well, why you do that, I'm going to start peeling potatoes. We've got some beautiful Desiree potatoes. So we're going to get this into the oven so we can start to render that fat down. Just a bit of olive oil and then use your hands to massage that into the ham. Okay, so into the oven. Um, I've got it at 180 fan force and we're going to cook this for about 15-20 minutes until it starts to caramelise a bit and you'll see there'll be little bits of drippings of fat that appear on the bottom of your tray. Okay, Phoebe's ham is in. Okay, great. I'm just at the chopping potato stage. So we want some nice big chunky pieces of potato here. Yep. Well, I have nothing to do then. You've got nothing to do. Actually, no, I do. Wait. There's no way you can be cooking a Christmas lunch if you're not drinking. Cheers. And so we've got cold water, yep. which we're going to put on high heat, bring it up to the boil. And we're going to salt the water to start the seasoning process of the potatoes before they start cooking. Yep. And then... Well, should we drink our wine uh, or should we do something? Should we make no. a salad? <laughs> I think I'll finish the last one. <laughs> okay, so you can see it started to render that beautiful fat. And the benefit of having it on a rack is that the fat starts to drip down and you're not having it like, you know, culminating around the whole um, piece of ham. Culminating, see, I'll use a fancy <laughs> word there. We're just going to get it into a bowl here. What we're going to do is basically every 15, 20 minutes, this could be somebody's job on Christmas, is just give the beautiful brush. And just remember to wrap the shank with some foil just to protect it. So now we're going to make the buttermilk and basil ranch dressing. 
whilst you're back to just in time to assist. You've drunk a lot. You've drunk a lot more wine than me. <laughs> so we've got buttermilk, some sour cream, mayonnaise, and then we've got some Dijon mustard. And then this is garlic and onion powder. And then we're going to add some basil leaves. So you can actually squeeze the lemon in for me, was if you don't mind. Use your fingers because I don't want to dirty anything else to clean up. So I'm just tearing the basil because I don't want to bruise it. A whole lemon or half a lemon? Um, yeah. I think a whole lemon. I think lemon. a whole lemon for this. We'll just add a little bit of salt. And that's it. So now you can keep this in the fridge until we're ready to go. Perfect. I yeah. think I'm going to give another glaze to the ham. Okay. Potatoes are beautiful and tender. So if we just drain them, get them into a colander. Okay, so we're going to add the ham fat and the duck fat here, and we're going to put this tray in the oven first. Yep. So the reason that you heat the fat first is because you really want to get that instant um, cook, like, what's the, what's the word? Zam. <laughs> what's the, what's that? Snap, what's anything, <laughs> you could use any word there. You want to get the instant pick of heat, smash you, of heat. You want to get the, you want to get the instant heat yeah. is what you want. Exactly. And then duck all fat. That duck fat or goose Pouring. fat. So you want to put this in the oven at about 200 degrees for about 15 minutes to get that nice and hot. Perfect. Yeah. And then while Phoebes is doing that, you can just kind of let these steam dry um, and that way all the moisture is going to be taken off the potatoes so you're going to get the ultimate version of the crispy potato. That fat is nice and hot. You can see it bubbling away. Perfect. And so semolina on here now. And then just some salt flakes. Yeah. But you can see on these potatoes, you've got all these nice fluffy bits. That's going to crisp up really nicely. For this, you can obviously just season them with some salt, but we're just going to do a mustard salt. Just some salt flakes and some mustard powder. Because I don't have a spoon, I'm just going to kind of mix it together like that. Like, <laughs> perfect. And then we're going to use that as a garnishing salt though, so don't put it on yet. And this is going to create a beautiful coating on top of that crunchy potato. So I'm just going to coat them completely in the fat. Okay, ready to go in the oven. Okay, ready to add the final finishing touches? Yeah, okay, so a little bit of that salt bay on top of those potatoes. Okay, so for the salad, I'm just going to cut the lettuce into some small wedges. In fact, just in half, because these are nice and small. So I've got some chervil on there, but you can use any herbs that you have. And then I'll just do some chives at the end, and then I'll just serve the dressing on the side. Yep. Just kind of go gently. You don't want them to be too thick. You don't want steaks and make sure that every slice gets a little bit of that blaze so nobody's fighting over it at Christmas. Okay, I think that's enough for two, Was Definitely. All we need to do is finish dressing the salad, mm -hmm. top up our glasses of wine, and that's a pretty epic feast, I think, for Christmas. I would be very happy if this was on my table on Christmas Day. 100%. So if you would like this recipe and heaps more for Christmas, head to delicious.com.au. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.